Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Maggie. I'm a second year med student and a former professional MCAT tutor and I run this channel with my brother John. First off, my apologies if you hear any background noise. I do live in an apartment complex and my upstairs neighbor is doing something noisy, renovating his entire apartment. I don't really know, but um, we're just gonna roll with it. So the point of this channel and this business is to bring MCAT prep materials to the masses at the lowest cost possible so that we reduce the barrier to get into medical school. We've done so much on our channel and with our business on the high yield sciences, that's kind of our niche, but I want to kind of give you guys some tips for cars because I know that that's something that a lot of people struggle with and that's something that I struggle with really bad going through. So today what I'm gonna do is give you guys tips and tricks or drills, whatever you wanna call them, for what I think are probably the top three biggest problems on the cars section. I think the first problem is probably the time constraint. Cars, like the whole impact's like a, a really tight time constraint as you probably know, but like cars is the tightest in my opinion. The second problem is that students are not great at getting the main idea, which is like huge in cars. If you've ever watched any of our videos, you know. And the third one is something we haven't touched on a lot, I think, and that's that the questions can be really tricky on cars. And sometimes you don't know what they're asking. So I'm gonna address each one of those and give you guys some tips to try to fix those. The first one is timing. So at the end of the day, when you sit for your test, you need to be able to read a whole car's passage and formulate a main idea in four minutes. If you are struggling really bad with this time constraint and getting the main idea under that time constraint, then what I would recommend that you do is take a passage and just record how long it takes for you to properly read that passage and get a good main idea. It may take you 10 minutes, 12 minutes, something like way longer than you actually need, but that's fine we just need a baseline. If you can get a good main idea in 10 minutes, the next time you take a car's passage, set a timer for nine minutes and 55 seconds or nine minutes and 50 seconds. See if you can get a good main idea then. If you can, then the next time, just keep bumping that time down by five to 10 seconds each time until you get to the four minute mark. It sounds easy, but you're probably gonna end up lowering your time and not really getting the main idea. Once you hit that point where you're not really getting the main idea in that time limit, just keep doing that time. Say that you're, you get down to eight minutes and you're like, I can't really get a good main idea in eight minutes. Keep doing eight minutes over and over and over until you can. Cause reading and understanding these cars passages, it's, it's a muscle. I mean, not really, you know, it's your brain, but like, it's like a muscle. You have to practice, you have to get the reps in and you will improve if you do. So just keep doing it and keep shaving off more and more time. This is gonna end up in a lot of practice passages, I know, but you need to be doing a lot of practice passages anyway, especially if you're not good with the time constraint of cars. It's gonna help you at the end of the day, I promise. So if timing is your issue, record how long it takes you to do a car's passage and get a main idea and then start shaving off time from there and work your way down to four minutes. If your problem is not timing, it's that you just can't get a good main idea, you just get to the end of the passage and you don't really know what the passage was talking about, what I would recommend, and I think is the most like efficient use of your time, is to do passages, read passages, without doing any of the questions. Just get a main idea, and then the important part is that compare it, compare it with someone else. This could be a peer, like a friend or something that's also studying for the MCAT, this could be a tutor, this could be our channel, something like that. Just have something to compare yourself to because at the end of the day, do you really know if you got the right main idea? None of us really know if we got the right main idea unless we like take the questions that are associated with the passage or you compare it to other people who also got the same main idea. Then it's pretty likely you got the main idea. The reason why I say don't do the questions with this is that to me, questions are like a whole other skill and I want you to be able to isolate getting the main idea. And I think that questions are just gonna take away time when you could just be getting another main idea, doing another passage, something like that. So I would say work on this idea first and then you can work on questions later if you need. I promise, if y'all can hear that in the video, like, if you think it's annoying, imagine me. Now, the last problem that I think more people probably struggle with than we talk about is that the questions in cars can be really convoluted and confusing. So what you need to do, if this is your problem, is you need to do more questions first off, 
practice. I, you knew I was going to say that. But then I think it's really important to be able to categorize CARS questions into what they're asking for. So me and John talk about on this channel that probably most questions are asking about the main idea. Like 75-80% of questions are asking about the main idea in one way or another. I'd say probably like 15-20% to 20 are asking about arguments and then like 5% are asking about like little details. You know those questions. The definition type questions, the just tiny detail type questions. They're not highly representative, but it's important you get them right because they do pop up. So I'm going to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about when I'm saying categorize your questions. And this is going to be a spoiler alert because I'm going to use the passage that I just did my most recent CARS breakdown on. It's passage six of the free practice exam, double AMC, whatever, the scored one. I really recommend that you go give that video a watch because I'm not going to go back through the whole passage or anything. I will show it to y'all so that you can read it if you want. But all that I'm going to do is show you the question that again I broke down in the last passage breakdown. I'm going to show you those questions and I'm going to tell you what they would be categorized as. Okay so this is the passage I'm talking about. You can pause and read and here's the rest of it. What I got as the main idea, I'm going to show it right now, is this right here. Job stressors, especially lack of control, is a health hazard causing illness and cost to the company. So now knowing that that's my main idea, I'm going to get into the questions and we're going to read them and I'm going to tell you if it's a main idea, arguments, or details question. So the first one, based on the passage, an employee's heavy smoking could be considered to be, and we kind of went through this in that breakdown, but when they talked about heavy smoking, what they were referring to were these behavioral strains right here in the next to the last passage. You don't see anything about behavioral strains in my main idea. This is an arguments question. And if you guys want, I can try to formulate an, an idea or a video on how to attack different types of questions like main idea versus arguments versus details whatever but at the end of the day I think it's important that you can categorize what kind of questions you're getting wrong if you're getting wrong a lot of main idea questions that's a huge problem because that's the majority of the questions that you're gonna see on the car section so maybe you need to go back and rework your main ideas with the second drill that I was telling you guys about earlier. All right, the next question, let's see what it is. Based on information in the passage, one could predict that which of the following people would experience the least amount of stress. So if we look at our main idea, we can see that the whole main idea is talking about job stressors, especially lack of control. The whole passage was about lack of control. It's even in the title, employee control. So this is gonna be a main idea question. You just answer it with the answer choice that is most closely aligned with the main idea. The next one says, based on information in the passage, one can infer that employees who perceive that they have a high level of control over their work environment will be. Again, this is a similar question to the last one. We're talking about that control that was up in the main idea. And so this is going to be a main idea question. It feels so weird for me to not like go through the answer choices and do like a regular breakdown, but that's not what this video is. I'm <laughs> just categorizing them. The next one says, which of the following if true most weakens the author's view regarding the process of occupational stress? So the whole, the, again, the whole passage was about occupational stress. And a lot of times these most weakens, most strengthens, blah, blah, blah. Those are main idea questions. What they want you to do is just pick something that would make the main idea better or that would just align with what the whole passage was saying. Or in this case, we're looking for most weakens. And so we're looking for something that's just opposite of the main idea. So again, this is a main idea question. The next one, which of the following claims regarding the negative outcomes of occupational stress is best supported by evidence in the passage? So these are an, a unique type of questions, best supported by evidence. This, I'm gonna call this main idea adjacent. <laughs> Cause a lot of times you can go through and you can go through each one of these answer choices and you can see which one is pretty much closest to the main idea. And that's probably gonna be your correct answer. But sometimes these trip me up. And so what I go and do is that if I have time, I'll go back in the passage and I will line count. I'll say, okay, there were three lines devo devoted to talking about this topic, but there were five lines devoted to talking about the you know answer choice B. So answer choice B is stronger, more evidence, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, if you can get good at these questions, I don't think I ever really got very good at them, to be honest, because I will still go line count. But you guys should <laughs> you guys should get better at it than I am and pick what most closely aligns with the main idea. If you go back and you watch our, I think it's the condensed to main idea part two video of the strategies playlist. It's the house method thing. John explains it really nicely. I think he did that video. I'm not sure. But whoever it is explains it really nicely that the main idea is like a house and the arguments holding it up are the pillars. And what you're looking for is the biggest pillar. If I take out which, if I take out all these answer choices, if I take out 
that occupational stress costs U.S. businesses $150 billion per year. How does that affect the main idea? Does that affect it really, really bad or does that affect it not so bad? And in this case, that's not so bad, right? Like, I mean, they, they talked about it in like one line up there, but they talked about other answer choices a lot more. And so you either need to line count or you need to think about that house and which pillar most holds the main idea up the best. But I'm kind of yapping right now. It's main idea adjacent, I think sort of like in between an arguments and a main idea type question. And the last one says employees perceived threat to psychological well-being in paragraph four suggested by the passage is, to me, it's a dead giveaway when they put a paragraph in there. It's not a main idea question. It's usually a details question because you can go back in the passage and they like list things about psychological well-being. They're asking this is a details question. So there we have categorized that entire like all the questions associated with that passage. Now the reason I think that it's important to be able to categorize your questions is one you're going to start to see things popping out that will help you to attack the question in certain ways. For example when it says parentheses paragraph four you know it's probably talking about a detail or at least a small argument. So you're going to want to go back up in the passage because they're going to be kind of nitpicky about those questions. Whereas if you see something about most weakens or strengthens, you know it's a an, it's an main idea question and you can answer it with the main idea. So I think it's important to like pick up on these trends in the, in the question stem and it's also going to give you clues at what you need to work on. Like if you're getting a lot of main idea questions wrong, you need to go back and rework your main idea. And like I said, if you guys want, I can try to come up with a video of like ways that I would tackle certain different types of questions, like how do, how do you attack arguments questions, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, if you feel like you're getting your main idea and you're still getting questions wrong, try categorizing them and seeing what you come up with. Now the last tip I have for you is to read. Just just read just anything. Just read something and really think about as you're going through. Stop at the end of you know a few paragraphs and be like what did I just read? If I had to put it in one sentence what would I say? It doesn't have to be double AMC materials. It, just pick something and just read it and try to summarize it. It's your brain but it's like a muscle and the more reps you get in the bigger that muscle is going to be. So that's all I have for you today guys. I hope that that helped. Cars is such a difficult thing but with practice and a little bit of tips and tricks I know that you guys can get better at it because I did and if I can get better at cars then I know you can I am not a, like I am not a cars girl I'm not a reading that's not me make sure to check out all the links in the description below leave us a comment what you want to see next if you love this if you hated it whatever but I will see you guys in the next one bye